Hey there everyone, uh, today we're going to be learning how to make a engine sort of like Mario where you can break bricks with your head and also walk on those bricks. So uh, I went ahead and set up some basic platforming stuff. We have a platform of an object, we have a player, we have a collidable backdrop that you can walk on, and I have animations and left and right movements as well as a jump and a hold jump. So let's take a look at that. You can move left and right, you can jump, and you can jump through these bricks because right now these bricks don't do anything. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is create an active object, name it block or brick or something, and make it look like a brick. This is going to be the bricks that we are destroying and can walk on. So then you need to inc insert another active object, and this is going to be the way that we check for collisions between the our top of our player's head and the brick. So we are going to name this uh, hitbox, and it just needs to be a block. We'll just make it a red block. It's pretty big right now, let's shrink it down. It doesn't need to be that big. Okay, so we need to have that hitbox always follow our player's position. So always set the position of the hitbox relative to the player. <clears throat> but then we need to have an offset because we want this kind of at his head. So drag this this sort of uh, outlined box about to the you know the center of it to the top of his head and we're gonna test that and make sure that that's in the right spot that seems pretty good because we want it we want this to make contact with the brick because um, the player is going to contact these bricks and stop so now we need to set collisions for the player and the brick so we will do this through the platform movement objects say collision testing test for obstacle overlap and then we're gonna say is the player overlapping another object and that object is the brick. If that is true, then we are going to say object does overlap with an obstacle. So now we should have, yep, we can collide with these bricks. We should be able to walk on them. Perfect. Okay, we wanna make our uh, hit indicator invisible. We don't need to see that. The player does not need to see that. So uncheck visible at start. Now we need to be able to destroy these blocks. So. We want to make sure that you can only destroy the blocks when you're jumping. You don't want to be able to have the blocks be destroyed when you're falling. That would be kind of weird. So, um, object state, object is jumping. And then we're going to say this collides with another object. And that object is the brick. Okay, the simplest way to do this is just to destroy it when this happens. So click on the brick and say destroy. We're going to add a, a brick effect though. But if you just want it to be simple, boom. Destructible bricks with your head. We're going to have some flying debris. So um, we are going to, if that's what you want, leave it there. But uh, we're going to have, like I said, some flying debris. So we're going to make this a little more complicated. And this is going to require us to delete this here. We're going to have to put this code into a behavior. So uh, we need another object. Insert an active object. And this is going to be, we're going to call this Debris Spawner, our Debris Spawner. Uh, again, this is something the player is not going to see, so just, you know, make it look like whatever you want for your own purposes, because this is going to be invisible once the game starts. Uh, all right, so go into a block here and add a new behavior. <clears throat> now, here's what we're going to check for the overlap. So we need to add our uh, our platform movement object, collision testing, test for obstacle overlap. Wait, sorry, we don't need that. Replace that. Replace that with uh, our hitbox. And we're gonna see if, uh, ask if the hitbox collides with another object, and that object is the brick. Um, then we need to import an object which is our debris spawner. <clears throat> so after the collision between the, the brick and the hitbox happens, we want to move the, the spawner, set the position of the spawner to be relative to the brick. And if this works properly, this should move the spawner to the brick that we have touched last. So let's check it. Perfect, okay. Yep, okay, so this does what we want. Um, <clears throat> Okay, let me think, what else do I need to do? Move to the brick. Um, we need to add a debris object. This is gonna be the debris that flies off when we crush the block. So just make it like, I don't know, just some kind of 
piece of red chunk. Uh, I'm just gonna make it a square, a little square. And we're gonna call this R Debris. And yes, I know that's pronounced debris. Okay, so our debris, we do not need to create the debris at start. So uncheck that. All right, go back to, no, we need to give this thing some variables. All right, so we're gonna need a X speed variable and a Y speed variable and a trans variable. <clears throat> And we need to add a behavior to our debris. So add a behavior to that. What we want to do is always set, we're trying to make this thing uh, become increasingly transparent and then we're gonna destroy it as when it becomes visible. So we're always setting the uh, transparency. Where is transparency? Under effect, compatibility, semi-transparency. Set semi-transparency to the value of trans we're also always going to add like I don't know three to trans so that's gonna make it more and more transparent uh, once trans is after it wants to hit a certain variable so we're a variable we're going to or value bleh, uh, compare trans to a value and once it is greater or equal than like I don't know 150 we're gonna destroy it <clears throat> We are also always going to need to move our uh, object here, this debris, by the x and y speed. So always set the position to all right, set x position to x position plus the value of x speed, and we're going to do this, do the same thing for the y. So always set the position the y coordinate to the position, y coordinate uh, plus y speed. Now we want this to have a, a gravity because once uh, what was going to happen is you're going to break a brick and these things are going to kind of fly up into the side, but they also need to come back down. So we need to always modify the value of y speed. Um, let me think, I think we're going to add to y speed. So let's say add to y speed. I'm pretty sure this is right. I might be doing this backwards, so we might have to go back and edit this. We're gonna add 0.1 to y speed. Um, that looks good. Okay. <clears throat> so where were we? Overlap in here. Okay. Go back to the behavior of your brick. So when they've collided, this you set the position here. We are going to. We're going to do this through a loop. So we're going to start a loop whenever uh, the whenever the player has collided with the brick. So go to fast loop, start loop, and we're just going to call this brick. And we're going to start brick a random number of times. We're going to do it five plus two. That'll give us a value. Random five would be zero, one, two, three, and four are your options. So this is going to be between two and six. So <clears throat> do that. Um, and then we just destroy the brick. Make sure everything's in the right order. Okay, so now we go back to the mainframe, and we need to uh, we need to have our loop. So on loop, and the loop is called brick. What we're going to do on this loop is create our debris object, and we're going to create it relative to our debris spawner because that debris spawner was set to the last position of that block <clears throat> um, and then we need to set which one's debris here we go we need to set debris we need to set their value so the alterable value of x speed should be a random value we like maybe negative three to positive three so that would be uh that'd be four minus three so random four Minus three should work, I think. Let me see, four. No, that's not right. 
Let's just do uh, six minus three. Okay, <clears throat> and we need to set the y speed to a negative value. We'll just make it negative four, just to see how that looks. All right, so this should work, hopefully. Let's find out. No, no, that didn't work. Oh man, and that's that's not supposed to happen. See, this is what you call a bug, and this is not our fault. This is a bug in Click Team Fusion. So that means I have to redo this. So if you ever have this problem, what you have to do is delete your object and start over, which is absurd. I hate when this happens. Oh man, that's that's disheartening. Well, you know, it actually does work pretty good though. Like our debris, there was only one there. Okay, well, I you know this might happen to you guys, so I'm gonna leave this in. Um, I'm gonna pause this video here, and I'm going to reset this up and see if it works. Be right back. Okay, guys, we're back. Um, I found out how to fix this. So. It's completely incomprehensible, but here's what you do. <laughs> just go back into your behavior. We're going of the brick. Just delete this whole thing. Just delete it. We're gonna do it over. Okay, we're gonna do it one step at a time and check it to make sure it works. So uh, again, we need to check for a collision between the hitbox and the brick. Now first we're gonna see if we can destroy just one brick. So let's give it a test. If it works here, it should continue to work down the line. Only one brick got destroyed. Now we need to set the position, as before, of our spawner relative to our brick. Let's test that. Also works. And the final thing was we need to set the fast loop of brick. I think it was called brick. And we want to do that a random, uh, what did we say, five? plus two, whatever, just a random amount of times. The reason we're doing the plus two is because we want to always have some bricks because any random number can return zero. So we don't want to ever have it, have no bricks pop out. So at least two bricks will pop out. So this should work unless it went all retard style again. Okay, perfect. So the final thing we need to do is to make our uh, debris spawner invisible. Boom. There we go. Uh, you know what, we could actually, I don't like the way that looks too much. I'm going to alter the gravity of the debris. So let's go back into the debris and we are going to change what we sub, uh, add to, not subtract. It was a 0 0.1, let's just make it one. It'll be, it might be too, too fast on the downward, but oh man, that was terrible. Um, <laughs> Let's change that. Let's make it 0 0.3. Yeah, I like that better. There. Okay. So, uh, yeah, sorry for that, that glitch that happened. That happens sometimes. If that ever happens to you, you might just have a bad object. Sometimes you have to delete the object. Sometimes you just delete the code. Um, unless I'm wrong. You know, it's possible I was doing something wrong. And if anyone has an answer for that, let me know. But when that happens to me, I just... Uh, delete it and start over and he <laughs> he's kind of spaz now he can't fall through the hole because he's too fat all right guys well that uh, concludes our simple mario brick breaking tutorial so if you have any more questions or comments uh yeah just let me know and i'll try to get back to you guys as always as soon as possible so um hmm is there anything else nope that's everything you guys have a good one and i'll catch you later